Hey guys, Young Blood with you, and today I wanted to discuss making your first ship upgrade in Star Citizen. Now, there's a whole lot of whales out there in this game that already have purchased the ship of their dreams, but the most common ship package in the verse at this point is a Starter Aurora package, and that was at least at the last time I've seen a percentage, which was 60% of all the packages have just an Aurora in there. Now, I think that number was even before the Mustang was released, so that percentage of, is probably increased on what actually includes a Mustang or an Aurora. Um, but either way, you know, that means we have about a 1.8 million accounts, so we're looking at a little over 1 million starter ships if those numbers still hold up today. That also means that a lot of you are going to be starting off your journey with little to nothing in your hangar and need to consider what comes next for you. So what I'm going to do is start off with a few career options and talk through your upgrade path, focusing on what I would consider to be um, the big three when it comes to careers, being combat, cargo, and exploration, with some focused career, uh, careers a little bit past that. Now, it's also important to note that ship prices in dollars now don't necessarily, necessarily equal what they're going to be in the game, um, because some factors that you need to consider are like how rare CIG wants them to actually be once they're released, and that impacts some of the pricing. But I think we at least get an idea from the cost now um, where the order of ships are going to be stacked in overall cost in UEC later. So let's go ahead and start off with combat. Uh, for those of you that opted for combat, you probably opted for either a Mustang Alpha as a true starter, or if you went with the Aurora, the chances are you probably went with the LN because the cost there isn't a big jump from the MR. All ships are going to start with equipment on board, but none of them, to my knowledge, are going to be starting with the best equipment on board either. So because of this and the cost of the ships in game, um, they're going to be pretty high. Um, you know, so I think what we need to do is consider the jumps as compared to uh, the equipment that's on board. So let's upgrade a few components to get you to your second tier of ships. The Aurora LN, if you've watched my videos, is probably one of the best bang for the buck type of ships. Um, you know, and especially if you have combat in mind, but it really it crosses categories in uh, different areas as well. First off, the ship has an impressive durability already, so I wouldn't start with upgrading your shields. That being said, I would certainly get to that at some point. For me, I would look at upgrading the weapons to higher damage options to really maximize your damage output, relying on your decent durability to start. Uh, if you're opting for energy weapons, I would also fairly quickly upgrade your power plant to help you improve your ship's ability to keep continuously firing and not drawing too much of your ability to power your shields away while you're taking damage. That benefits you in a few different ways, which makes it valuable. Uh, weapons and power plant are uh, my two top priorities. The one thing that you may want to consider even before those is a jump engine, and that applies to the Mustang Alpha as well, since neither of those come with that equipped stock. So on day one, you're going to be able to work in a, um, you know, a different system. Um, if you don't have a jump drive, you're going to have to be able to just make your money in the current system that you're starting in um, until you're able to upgrade to that jump drive. So if you're playing with people and they're going to be in other locations first and you want to stay with them, or even if you're playing solo and you want to open up more options as a priority, then the jump drive would be your first buy. Now, regardless of the order that you buy them in, the Aurora is now able to travel further and pack an increased wallop um, while retaining your ability to have solid durability and getting a slight bump in overstock um, thanks to the benefit of a power plant with the, uh, the what that's going to do to your shields. The other thing that you could consider doing uh, to that Aurora is increasing the engine since it starts with a size 2 but can actually move up to a size 3. Now keep in mind that the size structure is changing on ships, but based on what we see as the intention, it appears they plan to leave a little bit of upgrade room from there. And that's how we're going to have to look at these going forward. So if I mention size numbers, just know that those are going to probably change a little bit, but the intention of the ship's path is listed in my mind. Uh, if you're looking to increase your overall speed, um, which is a huge weak point of the Aurora, that would be worth a, um, worthwhile considering as far as upgrading your engine. Um, now, that's probably going to have a minor impact on maneuverability, but it's not going to be much since you can't upgrade your maneuvering thrusters on the ship, at least to my knowledge. Now, on the Mustang, we're assuming that the Alpha was your choice, because if you had the Delta, it cost a lot more than the starter ships really are, and it already has a lot of damage output, so we're focusing more on the Alpha. The Beta and the Omega and the Gamma, those options all fall into more specialized career choices that are kind of away from combat, so we're not going to discuss those. Now the Alpha, unlike the LN, is already a fast and an agile ship. It flies well, but it does lack in durability. Um, to focus on that weak point, we're going to really work on upgrading that shield from a size 1 to a size 2 and keep that powered by upgrading your um, power plant as well, especially since you already have a default energy loadout. Energy weapons draw more power from your power plant, and if they're taking all the priority, your shields are not going to stay up. Now you're already running the largest size power plant that you can on this ship, but it is a power plant focused on endurance. Um, and in combat, you want power. 
when we get more component options, I'd be looking for stronger output shields. That's more focused on effectiveness versus, or more uh, stronger output power plant. That's more focused on effectiveness versus efficiency. Now, as far as the weapons are concerned, you're pretty limited in your output right now because while you have four weapons in total, they're all very small in size. What I would suggest is spending some credits to turn two of those into ballistics. Therefore, you're giving yourself the benefit of a mixed loadout capable of puncturing shields, knocking down shields as well, and at least one set of weapons not reliant on carrying ammo. Finally, on both the Aurora and the Mustang, if you want to keep on upgrading, placing some focus on coolers could be an interesting option because these are going to try and help prevent your weapons from overheating. And with the power plant improvements that I'm suggesting, you'll likely more often suffer from overheating your weapons than being in a power drained state. One final adjustment could be to upgrade your avionics, including targeting system and scanners. Um, the further you can see and the more detail you get on your targets, um, you're going to be a more effective hunter. So now that we've laid out some of your options to get your ship upgraded, let's look at the next tier of ships that would be a, a kind of a logical choice. You know, some of you may be thinking, great, I've spent all this money on upgrading my ships, and for what, just to move on to the next level? Well, yeah, sort of, but the good news is, is that the upgrades on your ship increase the value of your ship, and the only time that becomes a downside is if you don't plan to trade in your ship for the purchase of your next. As these are starter ships that we're talking about, they're not going to be ones that you're going to use very often if you hold on to it. So by trading in and paying the difference, you're going to be better suited for the role that you want. And that applies to all ships. Now, we learned that lesson in Elite Dangerous, and based on what we've heard from CIG, I think the similar type of gameplay is going to apply here. Further, the trade value um, is probably not going to be exactly what you paid for it since it's now a used product. So if you're going to buy a ship that needs an upgrade that you already have, you could opt to not sell that item and use it on your next ship. So what ship ends up being next? I think that depends a little bit on how specialized you want to be and how long you're willing to save for before making that next purchase. If you value versatility and only plan on having one ship, then I would suggest grabbing an Avenger Titan. It's got cargo space in the back, you can upgrade the rear to include an EMP or for electronic warfare, or you can drop prisoner pods in there to make more money in a bounty hunting type of role. The Avenger is quick, it's agile, it's a decent fighter overall. Now if you want to focus more on just pure dogfighting, then you have a few options and it comes down to, to cost and what type of armament you want to focus on. If you like ships that fly quickly, they look nice, and are more interested in missiles than actually weapons, then the Gladius is that ship for you. Um, it has a very large and numerous missile mounts, meaning you can do a lot of damage or scare a lot of people off there, and punch above your weight class against bigger ships. The downside is, is that missiles are likely going to cost a lot of credits, so if you don't want to use them or if you run out, you're left with some pretty underwhelming weaponry on the Gladius. The good news is the ship flies well, so you can outmaneuver and wear down targets pretty well, but the bad news is it's not very durable. If you value fast, agile um, ships that have a lot of firepower, then on the cheaper side, a Buccaneer is going to be a pretty good option for you. With up to six weapons on it, plus some small missiles, um, the ship is really capable of doing a lot of damage to targets and is capable of evading inbound shots, but it doesn't have the level of durability to really slug it out with heavier targets um, for very long times unless you're really good at staying out of their lines of sight. Now, if you're looking for a ship that's a little bit more tanky in origin, then the F-7C Hornet is priced pretty well with straight-up impressive durability, average speed, and slightly below average agility. <clears throat> the ship is capable of running three size 3 fixed weapon stock, um, which provides a lot of oomph, but you can even increase this by replacing the cargo pod in the back with a ball turret um, like that comes on the more expensive Super Hornet, giving you five size 2 gimbaled weapons or three size 3 fixed and two size 2s on that ball turret. Now, when I say it comes stocked with the ability to carry size 3 weapons, it comes stocked with size 2 weapons on gimbals. You can take the gimbals off and attach size 3 fixed, but you have to buy those weapons as well. Um, that's going to give you the benefit, the Hornet line, like the Avenger has, of getting flexibility from the variants as well. So you can run three guns and have a cargo pod, you can run three guns and have stealth pod, you can run three guns and have a tracking dish, or you can maximize your firepower with the ball turret. There are a lot more ships that I think go up in size and overall capability and crew and cost from this point, um, but these are options where I would want to maybe recommend making the jump from the starter ship to these because you get so much more effectiveness that I wouldn't want to wait to spend your money anywhere else and just plan on upgrading to tier 3 ships later in the game with your earnings from your tier 2 ship. Now moving on past combat, let's go ahead and look at exploration. 
Now for starter ships and exploration, we're looking at the Aurora again and the Mustang Beta. And like I covered recently in the picking your, the right exploration ship video, the tricky part is when it comes to the Aurora is depending on which version you start with. Now I had advised that everyone that the LN is the better option in the long run with these ships since it can be equipped with everything the LX can, which is the exploration version, while being the only Aurora with the additional hard points. Now for both starter ships, exploration um, requires a few different advantages to really exceed range, scanning, and computing. Now, if you start with the LN, you're missing out on range via an efficient engine and a jump drive. So basically your range is gonna be limited based on fuel usage, not to mention that stock, you can't even leave the system that you start in. Now you could obviously do some exploring in that system, but if you wanna really branch out, you need that jump drive. So my upgrades for the LN would be to focus on the jump drive first, then I would improve the scanning ability by swapping out the combat focused sensors and avionics with more exploration focused ones, and then moving to the engine to improve overall efficiency, swapping out power for range. Now if you end up starting with the Aurora LX, you already have the jump drive and the fuel efficient engines. So I would look to bolster that up by upgrading the sensor suite to the most powerful one that you can fit and afford, um, and past that, upgrading components like data storage or avionics, and then looking for a better jump drive. Now you're also gonna be undergunned, so if you run into trouble while you're in deep space, I would also focus on the few weapons that you actually have by finding what packs the most punch without regard to ammo. I'd go with the ballistics knowing that you're not looking for a fight, and if you end up in one, your goal is to either win quickly or escape, not go find more trouble, so ammo isn't a problem. Now if you can go with the Mustang Beta, um, it was already designed with exploration in mind, but you have some room for upgrades in a few areas, like for example, a larger power plant by one size. This would allow your ship the same level of increased scanning that we discussed before. Um, and additionally, with this ship not being much of a fighter, um, though it, granted it's probably a little bit better than an Aurora LX, you still could benefit from an increased uh, in shield size. Now this would help with the dangerous areas of space, not only from attacks, but probably from things like natural phenomenon like radiation and debris. The one catch there is that a larger shield may be more, a larger shield means that you're going to need more power. Um, but you're able to change your power usage to different systems kind of on the fly, so you could minimize that impact a little bit. Now keep in mind, the larger components mean a higher signature, so while you're going to be doing a better job at exploring, you're more likely going to be detected. So there is a little bit of a balance of power given there as far as the amount of power versus the signature that's put off, um, to where a higher quality smaller option may end up being better than a lower quality larger option. So the same goes for the beta when it comes to avionics. If there's higher quality options, I would go for it because then you're maximizing your efforts. Now that you've upgraded your starter ship to a point to where you can start saving credits for your next ship, you have to decide which one is right for you. If you don't want to save for very long, the 315P by Origin should be a good option. This one is close enough in cost to these starter ships where you probably need to consider how fast you're earning credits to decide if it's worth making the necessary upgrades to your ship or just flat out saving and buying the next one. Now remember, you're going to end up recouping some of that cost at the sale of your ship, but probably not everything that you spent, so play with the numbers to see what's best for you. But in the 315, you get a totally more capable ship that's bigger, that's faster, has better components, has a great cockpit, and some cargo space as well. At the same price range as the 315P, you also get the Reliant Sin. And the interesting piece about this Sin is that it's actually a, a research vessel, more focused on analyzing and studying than finding. Now, the two careers sort of go hand in hand, so if you want to move more in that direction, the SIN should provide you with more capability to study and collect analytical data um, than the more traditional explorers. But it does come with the caveat of probably not having the same level of effectiveness in a more traditional exploration role. The ship does have a great cockpit area. Um, it's got a lot of visibility. It's got a cool flight model, though it's not necessarily fast or agile. Um, and if you really want to get to exploring with some high capability, you kind of need to look past that and look to what I would target um, as the real king of this tier would be the Freelancer Dur. Uh, the Dur stands for duration and is a cargo ship that's really fitted with components to help you in exploration. It comes equipped with room for four people, but really designed to operate with one or two. Um, you've got a ship that also has long-range scanners, reinforced extended fuel tanks for longer range, and a stock jump engine. Uh, the Dur also comes with a more than decent cargo space in the back that allows you to collect goods along your journey um, that you can end up taking back and selling to maximize your profits, or you could end up sticking something in the back like a dragonfly or a small rover in the rear of the ship that would help you in exploring planetary surfaces. And this is the first ship that's really capable of extending your exploration past space to the ground on a planet, and that makes you a more well-rounded explorer, and to be honest, is one of my favorite ships in the game for this role, and really overall, um, based on it being very diverse in capabilities. 
Lastly, we're going to talk about cargo. Um, and in this role, you're looking at two primary factors you need to consider, being range and cargo space. Um, but then you need to look at secondary factors like defensive ability and speed. Now, as starter options are concerned, the Mustang um, most designed with this in mind is the Mustang Alpha, capable of carrying a store-all box on the rear of the ship. Again, the Mustang is sort of fast, fairly agile, but that will be impacted once you have a full load in tow. Upgrades that I would consider to the Alpha would be upping the power plant and swapping out the engines to something that has more output to allow for better performance with a heavy load on board. Now, when you're carrying valuable items, I would also opt for better shielding to keep you protected under fire if you are engaged. That isn't a replacement for having an escort along with you, but it certainly helps regardless if you have one or not. You also need to get a jump engine if you're really wanting to do commerce out of the system, and maximizing profits in a commodity-driven market is all about buying low and selling high. You're probably not going to buy low and sell high all in the same system, so you need the ability to use jump points, which requires a jump drive, which is why that's a mandatory upgrade for you. On the Aurora side, much like with Exploration, we have the same caveats that we had with the LN, where it can be upgraded to the same as the CL or the Clipper, which is the cargo version of the Aurora, while still having more hard points available. Basically, the LN is a straight upgrade in just about every regard. It does require you to add a jump drive, which is upgrade number one, and swapping out the smaller cargo box in favor of the bigger option the CL starts with um, is another almost mandatory option. Now, as far as other upgrades are concerned, the engines are worth looking at, but you need to consider your primary goal. Are you looking for shorter range trips? If so, high power, low efficiency engine is probably going to be you a better uh, be a better choice for you um, to give you more speed and agility on your trip. If you're going to be focusing on more long range travel, then I would opt for something with better efficiency and range. Upgrading from these starter ships, you have a lot of different options that you can choose from in the cargo world, um, but a lot of these ships have different roles and costs that you need to factor in as well. For example, it doesn't cost you much more at all to actually purchase an Avenger Titan, which carries its cargo interior instead of a, in a box held on the outside of the ship. Um, the Avenger is also a very versatile ship like we talked about earlier, but the problem comes in with it not actually being that big of an improvement in over cargo carrying ability. So if your priority is a bigger cargo hold, which for most of you it's going to be, then I would move past the Avenger. But if you want to do a little bit of everything and still do some cargo, then it's an interesting option, especially if you're thinking about smuggling or doing deep space hauls. Now, if you're really looking to make an impact on how much you can haul, you have to wait a bit to get significantly bigger ships because the space inside the ship and the ability to carry impacts the overall cargo capacity. That's a true statement, except when you're talking about the whole series. The hulls are the dedicated cargo-focused ships of the verse, and they're carrying their cargo exterior on the ship and like a lattice structure around its midsection. Moving to a hull A or a hull B is a really attractive option, and considering the hull A is going to pretty much quadruple your cargo carrying ability over the starter ships, and as of now, we're only really talking about costing about twice what the starter options do, um, that's an impressive jump. Even past that, the whole B is able to carry just under 40 times what the starter ships can muster, um, while being about three times the cost. And both of those are really pretty staggering increases in capacity compared to the cost, and it just depends on how long you're willing to upgrade. And there's probably a case to be made that you could go from starter ship to whole A to whole B, selling each as you go along, but that's really more of a decision for you. Unlike the larger hull options, the A and the B are both able to land on planets while fully laden, and they are capable of being flown solo without any negative impact. The problem with the whole series is that they're going to have issues with maneuvering when laden, and they're going to be pretty slow, which is a very weak um, issue, or it's a big issue for a ship that's also going to be weak in defenses. So if you are planning on running cargo in safe space, um, or don't mind hiring escorts to keep you safe in more dangerous areas, then the whole A and B are going to be about as good as it gets at this tier 2 level. That being said, if you have plans for more dangerous space and doing operations in those high-risk areas, um, and don't like the idea of all your cargo being out for all to see, then let's look to the base Freelancer. It's capable of carrying about five times the cargo of a starter ship. You have an internal compartment to keep your items safe and make them harder to scan. Um, the ship is very well designed. It's very versatile in different roles. It's able to be upgraded to do different things. Uh, it's able to travel long distances, and additionally, they're pretty durable, have a pretty significant missile loadout, and have uh, four size three weapons, so it's not an easy nut to crack, and you can kind of defend yourself a little bit better. Now, if you want to be able to run cargo with one to two people and do so with keeping it safe in mind and giving you the ability to do more in dangerous space without the requirement of an escort, then the freelancer is probably the right choice for you. 
Um, you could also consider moving to a Cutlass, but that's in the middle of a rework right now. And while it may not carry as much cargo as some of the others, it's going to be a highly versatile ship that borders on gunboat in a way. And it may be worth your consideration. But until we get the final details on that rework, I'm not listing it as a recommendation at this time. More of a keep an eye out for this ship once we do get more information. So there you have it. That's the big three categories of roles to play with ideas on what ships to start with, what to upgrade on those ships, and eventually what ships to move into next. So I really hope this helps some of you guys out when your ship buying decisions and overall upgrades. Um, and that's going to be it for now. So um, if you do have questions, please let me know. Otherwise, uh, stay tuned for a lot more coming soon. Have yourselves a wonderful day and take care. Yeah.